good evening everyone uh, welcome to today's master class brought to you by uh, the academic council of uh, iso uh, the topic for today is cholangiocarcinoma this is the 45th uh, chapter in our uh, master class series um, i request uh, iso president uh, professor pk das uh, to kindly uh, deliver the welcome address for today's session sir thank you sir good evening to all uh, so i welcome to this uh, master class which is which has become very popular over last uh, two and a half years and especially to the students youngsters consultants and uh, everybody including examiners and we are very uh, happy to declare that uh, uh, dr uh, subramanian sir rao and srijan they are they are very keen and they are very you know they are uh, really very punctual and they are dedicated to this program so today i'll be also i, I will welcome dr uh, sadashivam who is uh, our past president and he is also a donor ad advisor from the south zone dr uh, uh raj govin sharma dr uh, dr misra dr arnab gupto for uh, uh, continuing support to this uh, master class and this time we selected this uh, topic of cholangiocarcinoma because there has been a lot of interest in the recent years for the uh, examiners to ask questions on this subject to the examinees and there are a lot of uh, developments and there are a lot of uh, uh, new concept has also come in this subject so in this master class i must uh, thank our uh, exam uh, moderator dr subhash who is from tiruvanthapuram who has uh, immediately agreed to the proposal and also dr uh, pratap reddy from uh, hyderabad who has also agreed with a very very short notice and uh, our students uh, dr uh, uh, can you please just tell them names dr arjun yeah. and dr nikun chauhan will be there sir yes yes dr arjun and dr nikun dr arjun you are from jaipur and nikun is from hinduja hospital mumbai uh, welcome you for uh, participating this uh, examination mock examination thank you sir thank you sir so so please uh, uh, dr subramanian sir rao please take over and uh, do the proceeding of this last paper thank you sir uh, a brief introduction of our uh, examiners today <coughs> uh, dr r subhash who is a consultant uh, gi and hpb surgeon uh, uh, at trivandrum kerala uh, uh, he will be the moderator for our session today and he'll be joined by dr r pratap reddy who's a senior consultant in uh, surgical gastroenterology at the at our institute which is basutar kamindo in cancer hospital he was the founding head of the department of uh, surgical gastro at usmania general hospital hyderabad uh, the examinees as we said are dr arjun and dr nikunj a uh, few instructions for this session uh, we'll be having a mock examination today uh, there won't be a expert talk uh, live today uh, as uh, our speaker dr anil agarwal is uh, uh, unwell uh, uh, he'll be recording his session and we'll be adding uh, that session to today's webinar uh, in the youtube so uh, if you don't see the expert talk today and you are interested kindly revisit uh, the youtube link where uh, in a few days uh, it will be there Uh, for the clinical examination session today the examinees uh, we request you to give to the point answers uh, you're not expected to know everything so uh, if you don't know something just pass it on to the your colleague and uh, this will save us time uh, our examiners definitely keep giving hints and it's up to you to catch them and uh, answer accordingly for our moderator dr subhash uh, uh, we request you to address the examinee by their name uh, when you are addressing a question uh, this will avoid confusion and it will ensure uh, that you know both of them get equal opportunities to participate uh, 
to both our moderator and examiner uh, in interest of uh, online viewers both that are live today as well as people who are viewing uh, it on youtube later we request you to give the expected answers to the questions that have been incorrectly answered or they remain unanswered uh, uh, this is where this mock examination will be different than an actual exam for the participants uh, for the senior iso members in the group uh, we thank you for logging in and we request you to post in your inputs uh, in the chat box as well and the residents it's a very unique opportunity to clear your doubts regarding cholangiocarcinoma i hope you make full use of it uh considering we don't have an expert talk today we we, we won't be sticking to uh, a time however at 30 minutes and 60 minutes i'll be uh, uh, notifying the moderator dr subhash with this uh, i request uh, dr subhash to kindly share his screen and uh, uh proceed with the clinical case discussion Yeah, good evening to all. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. You can see the images. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. sir. Not here. Yeah. So, good evening to all, and uh, welcome to ISO Master Class Series forty-five. Uh, the case discussion is on hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, welcome, Dr. Arjun and Dr. Nikunj. thank you sir uh, yeah hope you have uh, prepared well and uh, all the best for your exams thank you sir uh, welcome pradab reddy sir uh, we will start with the discussion of the case right away the case 1 so where the presenting complaint and history of presenting complaint it is a 58 year old male patient he presented with lowest discoloration of the sclera of 5 years duration he has got generalized itching 3 weeks duration Yellowish discoloration of urine and clay-colored stools. He has got progressive symptoms. There is no history of fever or pain in abdomen. History of loss of appetite, but he doesn't give history of loss of weight, normal bowel and bladder habits. So the, he is a hypertensive on treatment. No other comorbidities. No previous history of jaundice. Not an alcoholic or a smoker. No significant family history. So these are the examination finding. The performance status is an ECOG one patient. He has got ectros, no lymphadenopathy. There is mild pyrrole edema. We can see scratch marks all over his skin, especially over the abdomen. There is a per abdomen uh, liver is palpable just below the right costal margin. No other positive finding. So what are we dealing with, Sergeant? Sir, in view of the uh, above findings, which show that the patient has been having progressive symptoms, the and the uh, with uh, with the presence of uh, uh, scratch marks and also clinical lictus, I'm more likely to think in favor of a diagnosis of malignancy for the patient, sir. Yeah, Nikunj. Sir, this is a case of painless uh, progressive obstructive jaundice uh, in a 58-year-old male with no history of uh, alcohol intake. and uh, no previous history of jaundice likely to be a uh, uh, extrahepatic biliary obstruction uh, due to the malignancy yeah we don't know exactly what is the correct diagnosis but as you correctly said it is a painless progressive jaundice that is the most important thing it is a yes, painless sir. progressive jaundice that is what we are dealing with so we will have to see what else is there from uh, further investigations and all uh, ready sir do you need Do you have any questions to the examinees? Yeah, could you be more specific as to the possibilities based on history and what is presented already, sir? Considering that we are thinking about a diagnosis of malignancy and more in favor of an extrahepatic cause of malignancy as well, it could probably be any cause which is present in the extrahepatic bile duct. probably which is present at the highest or at the at a lower level 
or it could even be any because of any peripotal lymphadenopathy which is compressing on the bile duct as well any malignancy which can be present in the region of the ampulla or the head of the pancreas or in the periampullary region strictly going by history of painless progressive which is more likely uh, any uh, uh, possible malignancy which is present in the bile duct sir okay Sir, uh, I would like to ask uh, on parabdominal examination whether there is gallbladder is palpable or not, sir. Very important. Yeah, that is what you should you should you should be knowing because there was uh, uh, whether the gallbladder was palpable or not that differentiate uh, the site of origin actually. Yes, so sir. you are not sure that it's a painless progressive jaundice. It can be either a CA head of pancreas. It can be a hilar lesion. Uh, but it will the painless, yeah. since it is progressive, it will differentiate somewhat from the periambular lesion that will be an intermittent jaundice. Yes, but sir. here it is a progressive jaundice by clinical history, so you can't say whether it is a CA head of pancreas or a hilar lesion. But that point is very, very important whether the gallbladder is there or not. So the gallbladder was absent in this case. So uh, can you come to a conclusion or a possible site now? So, sir, between uh, head of pancreas and uh, hilar cholangio, uh, as the gallbladder is not palpable, the lesion most likely is above the cystic duct. Uh, here in this case, will be most likely to be a hilar uh, okay. lesion. Very good. What is that law? That corvoisius law. Corvoisius law. So, probably we'll be knowing about corvoisius law. So, what all preliminary investigations you need next? Arjun. Uh, sir, we will uh, first be doing a, uh, all routine blood investigations for the patient, which will be including a complete blood count, uh, renal function test, all the liver function tests for the patient as well. After this, we will, uh, considering uh, the first investigation of choice in this case, we can look for an ultrasound whole abdomen to see whether it is a medical or a surgical cause. If considering that we are thinking about a surgical cause, the next step after this would be a triphasic CT scan for the patient. We could we can also be doing tumor markers to differentiate the cause for this. The tumor markers will be including a CEA, a CA199, and also an alpha fetoprotein. This will be the three basic uh, tumor markers that we'll also be going along with. Uh, along with on the basis of the reports of the CCT and all the reports are on the base of the above reports, I can also think about further investigations such as an MRCP, etc. Okay. So uh, these are the blood investigations that is done for this patient. So you can see the hemoglobin, total count, platelet count. So why is platelet count important in this case that is specifically given? To look for the function of the liver, sir. It will give an indirect evidence, oh, definitely. So OTPTs are raised, serum alkaline phosphatase is on a higher side. So the INR is 1.12, serum creatinine. Nigunj, what is the importance of creatinine? Creatinine uh, will be to differentiate a hepatorenal dysfunction. Uh, uh, the patient with uh, the underlying uh, liver dysfunction will uh, cause the raised of serum creatinine, sir. decompensated uh, liver failure. The and another in in uh, case of sir jaundice, deeply jaundiced patient, there might be uh, the uh, plugging of the renal tubules with bilirubin, which may cause the renal dysfunction. Yeah, the creatine value is important even while planning for the further treatment course, whether the patient yes, has real failure is there or not. That is very, very important in planning the surgery also. Okay. So this imaging is CA, serum CA is 23, SCA 99 is 264. You need any other tumor markers other than this? An alpha fetoprotein might can uh, it, it can, if it's a higher cause, as we are suspecting, this should be enough, sir. But to rule out any intrahepatic cause as well, we can also think of an alpha fetal code. Okay. Can you comment on the tumor markers, the values? Nikunj? Yeah, so sir, CA-199 is uh, raised in uh, around more than 80% of the cases with uh, biliary tract uh, cancer, likely uh, hyaluronic cholangiocarcinoma. But uh, its significance, uh, it is uh, not as specific because in a deeply jaundiced patient, uh, it might be because of the biliary obstruction and benign causes, this is raised. And uh, in particular, it is useful uh, when it, it is more than 100, it is significant, likely to be because of a malignant cause. Okay. 
and it has to be repeated after the biliary drainage is established. And it is important in patients with primary sclerosing cholangitis while doing the screening for cholangiocarcinoma also. Sir. So, yes. so that is a very important thing. You have to look for evidence of cholangitis also because abnormally high values can be seen with the serum CA99, but there are other false positive results can happen with several of other conditions. Cholangitis is one of the most common things. Yes, sir. Pradap, sir, anything else to ask? Yeah, the only thing. Uh, they should have added when a question about serum creatinine was asked is, in addition to disease-related things, it's important to have serum creatinine because he has asked for a CECT abdomen. Yes, sir. Could be one of the investigations. So for that, most of the time, it's for that reason it's important. Thank you. So about the ultrasounds, this is the ultrasound of the abdomen. He has got an enlarged liver with bilateral diffuse IHBRD, got a contracted gallbladder, CBD is not dilated, grade 1 prostatomegaly. So these were the preliminary investigation with which he uh, came to our OPD. So what next, Arjun? Sir, after this, uh, we could think of a triphasic CT scan, sir, contrast-enhanced CT scan, also along with an MRCP as well, in order to look for the delineation of the ductules. So you need both CT and MRCP? Sir, uh, uh, or a uh, uh, single investigation and MRCP could also be enough, sir. Nikunj, what is your... <coughs> so, sir, MRCP is mainly help with the longitudinal extent of the uh, biliary system involvement and CCT abdomen triple phase will uh, tell us about the vascular involvement uh, in particular and uh, the nodal involvement, which is uh, more uh, specific with CCT abdomen, sir, then MRCP. Yeah, in a case like this, where the ultrasound is suggestive of a hilar block, what next means if you have to tell one investigation, it should be MRCP. If you have to tell yes, both investigations, you have to tell MRCP along with uh, CT uh, angio reconstruction. Sir, another uh, added uh, advantage of doing CCT abdomen is we can plan the uh, uh, resectability and uh, CT volumetry, which is better, uh, uh, can be calculated on CT yeah, rather for than both, MRCP. Yeah, for both those reasons, a combination of MRCP along with CCT with angio reconstruction should be the answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is the CT image as uh, uh, you have requested. <coughs> so Arjun, comment on the CT. Okay, what do you see? Sir, gross IHBR dilatation is seen in this uh, film, sir, along with... Uh... Yeah, Nikunj? So this is a plain uh, uh, CCT abdomen, uh, which is showing the dilated uh, uh, intrahepatic biliary radicals with uh, both the left as well as right uh, hepatic duct dilatation. So whenever you are asked to comment about the CT scan or any investigation, so always tell the complete thing. Okay. So this is a plain CT. Axial. Scan. Yeah. It is an axial view. So this yes, is a sir. plain CT axial view showing mainly the liver, which shows bilateral intrahepatic biliary radical dilation. That is the only thing that you can identify. In plain and another, view, there is a cyst in the uh, left uh, kidney, yeah. sir. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. So other than that, uh, you can comment on uh, especially stones, uh, any foreign body. So these are the things that we look at the plain CT. So look for calcification, stone, stents, uh, or uh, foreign bodies. These are the things. So here, what you can see is bilateral IHPRD in this particular thing. Okay. So this is the plain CT, <coughs> bilateral intrahepatic glare radical dilatation. 
no stones, no foreign bodies, no calcification. Okay. So, so always the CT scan, it should be a contrast enhanced CT scan, multiphasic. Usually we ask for a, something called a liver protocol, which has got a plain CT, then an arterial phase, a portal venous phase, a portal phase and a venous phase and a delayed phase. So this is a, a liver protocol CT that is ideal for most of the liver lesions. So whenever you try to answer, the answer should be complete and full. So this is a, a contrast enhanced CT scan. So this time, Nukunj, you can comment. This is, uh, sir, arterial phase of the CT. Is it really the arterial phase? This is uh, actually the venous phase. This is actually the venous phase. You, you can you just see this is the portal yes, vein. Sir, portal vein. Portal yes. vein. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is the IVC that you are seeing yes, here. Sir. Not arterial phase. So when you take the arterial phase alone, only the iota and the arteries will arteries. be. Yes. Okay. So here you can see the portal vein, uh, the hepatic veins. So this is uh, not an arterial phase. So once again, so so you can see the IVC there that is yes, branching out to give the hepatic veins. Yeah. Portals. Sir, there is a mass lesion seen at the uh, confluence of the right and left hepatic duct with uh, the involvement of the uh, right portal vein, sir, in this phase. So can you identify most of the structures here in this CT scan? Yes, sir. So, sir, there is uh, uh, in center is the Uh, main portal vein and uh, at the top what, what is the swing, uh, yeah. segment two and three. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. So just, yes, sir. just follow this thing. Just follow this thing. So that is dividing right. into yeah, yeah. the right, right. portal vein. Right, right. right portal vein. Yes, yeah. Sir. yeah. Okay. So what is this that you are seeing here? This is the IVC. So once yes, again, sir. so this is the IVC that you can see. From the IVC, this is the right portal right vein. Port the middle right hepatic vein. Right hepatic vein, middle hepatic vein. Middle hepatic middle vein hepatic. And okay. So what is this? What you are seeing here, this one? Uh, left hepatic tub, uh, sir. Yeah, biliary radical on the left side. Yes, sir. Here, so there is a luminal irregularity yeah. seen just yeah. before division of anterior, right anterior, and posterior portal veins. Yeah. So this is the lesion that yes, sir. you are describing, isn't it? So yes, sir. Lesion, so that is yes, the sir. portal vein, and there is a doubtful area here, isn't it? Yes, sir. There is. So what what are the CT findings in a hilar cholangio? Suppose if it is a hilar cholangial carcinoma, what will be the CT findings, Arjun? Sir, in case of a hilar cholangio carcinoma, we will be able to notice a mass lesion which will be present at the hilus. Uh, at the hilus. And uh, sir, do we have to tell you what all we'll be looking for, sir? Yeah, definitely. Because uh, it is all, not always easy to identify the mass lesions, especially in hilum in a CT scan, if you are not that experienced or if you are not seeing in a CT console. So what are the other things that you will look at? As sir, we will... Uh, we will be looking for the, as the seen in this uh, picture, we will also be looking for the presence of intrahepatic biliary radicular dilatation, which could signify a possible block downstream. We will also be looking for any uh, involvement of surrounding structures as well, such as the portal vein or the hepatic artery, which are also pleasant and close proximately to the hilus. Along with this, we will also be looking for any extra 
uh, if uh, any spread which is ex extending outside the bile duct and uh, going along to involve the surrounding structures as well. And also along with this, we'd be looking for any peripotal lymphadenopathy as well, which could be seen in such uh, conditions. Yeah, very good. So here you have a mass lesion here and a suspected lesion here. So what will be the contrast enha enhancement pattern for a hilar cholangiocarcinoma? Sir, in case of a hilar cholangiocarcinoma, non-enhanced, uh, non uh, if it on... Yeah, yeah it's okay. What, you, what you're saying is correct. So it will be uh, non-enhanced in arterial phase and then... So it is classically something like a delayed enhancement pattern that is uh, persistent, seen. Persistent enhancement yeah. till uh, delayed phase. In comparison yeah. to hepatocellular carcinoma, there will be early arterial hyper-enhancement and uh, early was out, sir. Yeah. So Pradab, sir, have any questions? Sir, you are not... Yeah, what else should you focus on means you should look for involvement of the portal vein, involvement of the hepatic artery, lymphadenopathy. Second order. Yeah, you have mentioned the lymphadenopathy. Second order but, biliary radicals and uh, lobar atrophy. Sir. And presence or absence of uh, ascites or peritoneal nodules in addition to that. So what what's your overall impression in this case? You want anything else or you are happy with this? This is exactly the reason why you should have a combination of MRCP with this. Otherwise, exact extent of the cholangiocarcinoma is very difficult on most CTs to measure. Yes, Arjun, so what is your diagnosis of SARAS with this CT image? Sir, this is a, according to the contrast and non CD findings, I, uh, this seems to be a case of hilar cholangiocarcinoma with invasion of the, uh, the, the right branch of the portal vein as well. Okay, what is the type? That is what I am asking. What is the, which, what, what is the, what is the classification? Uh, the, the AJCC class. No, no, you have to you have to tell whether it is a based on the site of origin of the lesion. It seems to be a type two uh, type two lesion, sir, which is involving the confluence according to the Bismuth Corlett classification. You think it is a type two thing? Okay, Nikunj? Sir, this is a, a type four according to Bismuth Corlett because it is involving the hilum and. Uh, the going up to the right second order uh, biliary radicals and uh, according to bloom card staging it will be a t3 sir because of the involvement of right portal veins so, to both so yeah, to both nikunj and arjun it's for this reason you should definitely ask for a mrcp reconstruction in most cities you cannot be very sure as to whether it's type 3 a b or a combination of these two. So don't do that mistake of answering this question based on only CT. <laughs> What's the type means? You should insist on MRCP reconstruction. Then only you give the type, okay. type 3A or type 3B or a combination of A and B, which some people call it as 4. So this is a CT report. Enlarged liver with a diffuse IHBRD, right and left hepatic ducts dilated, confluence not visible. There is a hypodense area not adjacent to porta, predominantly at the confluence involving both right and left hepatic ducts. It is extending up to the secondary biliary radicals on right side. So mass intending onto the right portal vein division. The right hepatic artery, left hepatic artery, common hepatic artery are not involved. There are a few enlarged lip nodes around porta, no paraiotic or intraiotocaval nodes. So what is the bismuth stage now, according to the CT, Arjun? So it would be a bismuth stage 3A, sir. Okay. Nikunj? Uh, sir, as confluence is not visible, it will be uh, type 4, sir. No, 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 no. So the confluence, if the both the right and left ducts will be separate, it is not type 4. It is actually from type 2 onwards, the confluence will will not be there. If it reaches to the secondary biliary radicals on right side, 
it will become a type 3a 3a if it involves the secondary biliary radical on left side it will become type 3b so type 4 is actually involvement of the secondary biliary radicals on either side so it should be that should be clear involvement of the right hepatic duct or the left hepatic duct doesn't qualify for type 4 it is actually the involvement of the secondary biliary radicals that states whether it is a type 3 or type 4 okay so just involvement of right and left hepatic duct it is only a type 2 if it extends to one side, secondary biliary radical, in, then it becomes type 3A or B. So both secondary biliary radicals on either side, then only it becomes type right. 4. Okay. okay, that should be clear. So any other investigations, Sarah has correctly pointed out there is a confusion regarding whether it is really a type 2 or a type 3A. The radiologist can say it is a type 3A, but still we are in confusion. So there comes the role of MRCP. So as uh, the discussion uh, we have previously discussed, both CT and MRCP are complementary, especially in case of hilar cholangiocarcinoma. So if you compare both, whether it is CT scan or MRCP as a single, as Sarah has correctly mentioned, it should be the MRI with MRCP and MR angiogram. That should be the answer if it is only one investigation. Because MRI can better delineate the lesions, the extent of the disease along the biliary radicals. It can give a three-dimensional picture of the biliary tree. So it can uh, identify the intrahepatic liver metastasis, especially when there is cholestasis. Especially some, sometimes there will be fatty liver or cirrhotic changes. So these things will be better appreciated with MRCP. So if you are asked for a single investigation of choice, it should be MRI with MRCP and M MR angiogram. So that should be your answer. But uh, for a surgeon, uh, we usually take both CT and MRI in some centers. Because MRCP and MRI, it is highly dependent upon the quality of the images. The quality of the images. And uh, if it is a good quality image, when you compare CT and MRCP, MRCP should be the first answer. Okay. So this is the MRCP picture as you have requested. Arjun, we, are, we know that we are not experts in MRI, but still, can you appreciate something there? So can you something yes, see there's a mask lesion. Yeah, there's a mask. Can you see something here? So this was the lesion that we were describing at that area, and there was a doubtful area at that region. That yeah, is you, you can show the reconstructed film if you want to spare some time. The MRC you for reconstruction you film. You don't yeah. have that reconstructed image, sir. Yeah. You don't have, then this is okay. Yeah, so this is the, these are the lesions that we have seen here. So you can clearly see this lesion, isn't it? Yes, so sir. Imaging onto the, actually the right anterior, right. Yeah, right anterior sectoral vein. There is a portal vein. So the right anterior branch, it is intending on. So the lesion is more towards the right side. So the left side is not that much. Okay. So the lesion is more towards the right side. So This is the MRCP report, enlarged liver with bilateral IHBRD, hyperintense lesion at the confluence and right and left duct, lesion extending along and between right anterior sectoral duct and right posterior sec sectoral duct. That means they are the secondary biliary radicals. So that means there is involvement of the secondary biliary radical on right side. Right. So what is the what is the bismuth stage now, Nikunj? 3A, sir. Yeah, it is 3A. So secondary radicals on the left side is free. No other lesions in liver. So, what is your diagnosis now? Sir, it is a case of hilar cholangiocarcinoma uh, uh, with extension with, uh, into the right, uh, uh, right uh, up to the right second or second order biliary radicals. Yeah, you give you give the complete diagnosis. You know, it's involving the right hepatic duct. Whether it's involving the right portal vein or not, also you should mention. 
and not involving the artery like that if you say like that it's much better yes sir it is a case of hyalocholangiocarcinoma which is involving the right hepatic duct and uh, and uh, with uh, with the growth present between the right anterior and the posterior sectoral uh, branches of the portal vein with no obvious invasion of the hepatic artery or the branches of the hepatic artery okay what type three yeah type three a hyalocholangiocarcinoma yeah. with involvement of the right portal vein yeah what what do you do next Nikunj? Yeah, so, sir, uh, uh, it is having a right uh, sided 3A uh, bismuth type lesion with the bilirubin of 24, and uh, uh, patient is non serotic. Uh, I would, uh, it looks resectable because it is uh, right portal vein is uh, involved at the sectoral uh, branches, and hilum is free, both hepatic arteries are free. Uh, there are no other lesions in the liver, uh, so it looks resectable. Uh, first thing I would like to do is the uh, biliary drainage of the uh, contralateral uh, side. Uh, once the bilirubin comes down to three, then uh, after a preoperative assessment and fitness of the patient, uh, we can consider for a surgical planning, sir, after CT vol volumetry. Arjun, any difference of opinion? Sir, considering that the bilirubin level is elevated at uh, 24, even I would uh, think of the same, sir. Uh, I would evaluate the patient for surgery, but only after uh, uh, ensuring a complete biliary drainage for the for this patient. I'm asking, do you need any other workup? Any other workup? Have you rolled out metastatic disease? Suppose if this patient is having a lesion in the chest, there is a metastasis in the chest, then. Uh, your question of preoperative biliary drainage surgery and all. So, will it come to your yes, mind? Then? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Metastatic work, yeah. work so, up next to it. The CT yes. and MRCT alone, you can't come to a conclusion of whether it is a uh, operable lesion or not. So, you have to do a lot of other things, isn't it? Okay. So, further workup is very, very important. So, you need to assess the liver function or the dysfunction. We have to rule out uh, the CLD or portal hypertension. So you need to do an upper G endoscopy to rule out where is it. So this is a 58-year-old male patient. Sometimes uh, he might be having either a biliary cirrhosis or cirrhosis due to some other reasons. He might be having varices. He will be having CLD and portal hypertension. Then he is not a candidate for surgery, isn't it? So these are very, very important. Don't come into a conclusion and just post this patient for surgery and surgical preparation. These workups are very important, especially in hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. You have to assess the liver function. Then, of course, you have to do a metastatic workup. You have to do a CT chest, and you have to roll out the metastasis. Yeah, that is also very, very important. And before resection, you have to do a CT volumetry to assess the future liver remnant. Future liver remnant. Yeah, these things are very important, not straight away to surgery. So you have to assess the liver function, metastatic workup, the functional assessment, the FLR, then only you plan for other things. Okay, so these are these things are very important. So any role for PET CT? Arjun? Sir, the usual sites of metastasis in a case of hyla cholangiocarcinoma are, are usually the peritoneum or the peritoneum lung or the bone. So, if this can be covered with a CT thorax and uh, with the C contrast and CT of the thorax and of the abdomen as well, the PET CT scan is not necessarily indicated. Nikunj? Sir, uh, there is no routine role of PET CT scan for. Uh metastatic workup, but it can be considered in patient with the primary sclerosing uh, cholangitis where uh, there will be a lot of inflammation and a dominant stricture where uh, and uh, when the cytology is inconclusive, uh, then for a definitive before definitive treatment planning, PET CT can be considered in patient with PSC. So in cholangitis, uh, don't you see that there will, there will be a false positive accumulation of uh, uh, FDG? So, is it that good if there is cholangitis? 
no sir it is not very sensitive but uh, before considering the uh, the definitive treatment in a patient with psc pet ct will uh, guide us sir yeah it is it is actually a very difficult thing especially in psc psc primary sclerosing phalangitis when there is a little bit of inflammation along the bile duct the uh, suvs you have to measure the differential yes, suv it over estimates yeah, yeah. it overestimates so there are differential scv values given especially in the setting of uh, pscs and based on that it is done but generally at least in some centers uh, routinely practice pet ct as a metastatic workup especially when there are uh, equivocal findings with ct or mrct so i will say an example if suppose if there are a few enlarged nodes which are seen outside the porta so suppose if there is a doubtful periaortic lymph node uh, inner aortocaval lymph node so you can't clearly differentiate whether it is a metastatic node or not in such kind of situation uh, there there will be an equivocal thing and uh, not outside the uh, uh, regional lymph lymph node involvement area so in such cases a pet ct is definitely indicated okay so routine as you said it is not indicated as per the literature but most of the centers are now routinely doing pet ct especially in equivocal cases and i have explained one uh, such situation sir would you like to ask any questions for that sir yeah see the when a question was asked whether pet is needed or not simple answer should be there is in general no role for pet ct scan unless on C C T chest and abdomen. There are some suspicious lesions which cannot be categorized, or there is evidence of suspected metastasis to faraway lymph nodes, which are generally not included in a resectional surgery. In such situations, maybe, but the standard answer is: is pet needed in hilar pharyngeal carcinoma? It's no. The second. yeah the second thing is before you proceed further on the workup which is available that is mr and ct abdomen and chest you should make a plan of what is the likely treatment and then only plan further so the point to stress here is don't jump away to preoperative operative bleary drainage and surgical procedure these things are very important especially when you are discussing hilar cholangio carcinoma assessment of the liver function volumetry and metastatic workup before that don't say that it is we are going for surgery and all okay so do you need a biopsy for confirmation uh, no sir we do not it is uh, if the patient has a dominant structure which is seen Uh, either on endoscopy uh, biopsy is not strictly indicated before we proceed for surgical intervention or if the patient is already a pre-existing case of uh, psc primary sclerosing cholangitis with a worsening of symptoms then it can be surgical intervention is indicated even without a biopsy nagun in unresectable and metastatic cases uh, we need uh, the tissue diagnosis otherwise uh, we can go ahead uh, without uh, the biopsy if it is resectable yeah generally the biopsy is not and uh, when any, any indication any other than that generally the biopsy is not indicated to proceed with further treatment especially surgery in case of hilar cholangio carcinoma as you know it is very difficult to get a biopsy in case of yes, hilar cholangio so is there any specific situations whether you need a biopsy common clinical thing that come across your clinical practice so to differentiate uh, between uh, differentiate as to the possible cause uh, if it's a metastatic disease if the patient is going to uh, if if he's not an operable candidate in that case we yeah, could uh, yeah, other than that any uh, to so, differentiate between a uh, extra liver uh, probably a colonic malignancy with which has metastasized to the liver sir to differentiate okay. between a metastatic adenocarcinoma or a primary cholangio carcinoma high large cholangio carcinoma metastasis yes sir confusion with metastasis that situation doesn't matter so generally there is no need for a biopsy the biopsy is sometimes needed when there is a previous history of biliary surgeries 
So now there are a lot of uh, biliary surgery. The patients are undergoing surgeries for biliary, especially cholecystectomy, sometimes a CBD exploration. So sometimes there can be a coexisting bile duct stones. So there will be a hilar obstruction and uh, down below, you can see a stone. Okay, so in the bile duct, you can see a stone. In such situation, whether it is really a malignant obstruction or a, a benign obstruction, in, in, in such situation, and another situation, as you correctly said, is PSC. So previous history of biliary surgeries, bile stones coexisting with this kind of biliary structures and cases of primary sclerosing cholangitis are rare occasions where you need biopsy. Or otherwise, generally, you don't need biopsy to proceed. So what do you plan to do next? Nikunj? Yes, sir. So uh, we have ruled out the metastatic disease. And uh, the patient is not, uh, patient is uh, having bilirubin of 24. Uh, we'll go ahead with uh, preoperative biliary drainage. And then uh, on basis of CT volumetry, uh, if FLR is uh, in the range of, uh, as, uh, there is no cirrhosis and uh, no history of uh, uh, alcoholic liver disease. Uh, if FLR is uh, in the range of uh, 30%, then we can go ahead with uh, the surgery. Sir. So when you, when you give that kind of an answer, I'll decide based on CT volumetry, for example. Yes. So we should... You should give two possible scenarios, no? When the volumetry, based on volumetry, FLR yes, inadequate, yeah. what will you do? If FLR looks adequate, what will you do? Yeah, so sir, when FLR is adequate, we can go ahead with the uh, resection. If FLR is uh, inadequate, uh, there should be portal main uh, embolization needs to be done and uh, then consider for uh, resection. Sir. Let's say FLR is adequate. You said resection. Will you? What will be the plan to? What do you mean by resection in this case? And what's, yeah, so sir, uh, what's the exact plan of treatment? Yes, sir. So this patient with uh, type three A uh, cholangiocarcinoma, he will require a right uh, uh, hemipatectomy with uh, the caudate lobectomy, sir, and the. Uh, uh, left duct to uh, biliary uh, enteric anastomosis sir, and uh, the nodal clearance. Sarjan, can you comment on the, sir has asked about the operability. So can, can you comment on the operability? So how you decide whether the patient is operable or not? So this will be considered on the basis of the preoperative evaluation set to check whether the patient is a possible candidate for surgery. As was mentioned earlier, we'll be checking for the routine clotting, the function of the liver, the presence or absence of ascites, any other nodules, any other contraindications to malignancy, the level of platelets, the presence of any hypersplenism, if it is present or not, and the count of platelets, all of this will be used to evaluate the presence of any portal hypertension, esophageal varices. All of this will be used whenever we are deciding a patient for a hepatectomy. Along with this, we'll also be looking for the preoperative uh, liver function tests such as the albumin levels and we should be checked for. The CTP score should also be calculated in any patient who is being considered for, uh, for, a, for a liver resection as well, along with a possible MELT score if required as well. No, in after a, all of this, the patient is... Con sir? Yeah, in a case of hyalur cholangiocarcinoma, a child book score, all those things in a jaundice patient will not be of much value. This is a case of hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. Treatment planning, when asked, should be, is it resectable or not? First of all, if it's resectable, what's the likely surgery needed? Most operable uh, hyalur cholangiocarcinomas, depending on which side is involved maximum, will either need right trisectionectomy or left trisection it. Okay. Very rarely you may end up with a scenario like this where right epitectomy along with caudate lobe excision may be adequate. Okay. So, very rarely you have scenario where there is portal hypertension associated in a ILR cholangiocars. So, very important point, Sarah's pointed out. Very important thing. 
so whenever you deal with a hyalur phalangeal carcinoma or in all cases where there is no cirrhosis when there is no cirrhosis there is no role for uh, ctp score or the mel score so that is that comes only when there is cirrhosis so only in the background of cirrhosis there comes the cld uh, uh, stay, uh, grading and all so this is we are dealing with uh, a hyalur phalangeal carcinoma and obstructive jaundice you see the bilirubin so when you calculate the ctp score what will be the score here so so that is not applicable for uh, unless if there is cirrhosis so only in cirrhosis cases you discuss about uh, a ctp score and all so wh whenever there is a liver resection don't uh, come with ctp score and mel score that comes only in the background of cld that should be very very clear so if there is no chronic liver disease all those things doesn't apply okay so whenever you are asked about the operability whether the patient is operable or not it actually uh the the examiner is asking the patient related factors and the tumor related factors okay the patient related factor whether the patient is fit enough to undergo a surgery it is generally the performance status his comorbidities whether he is fit enough to undergo a major hepatectomy those kind of factors do matter okay and of course the tumor related factors then comes the word called resectability whether the, that lesion is resectable or not so there under the resectability there will be local factors that means there is no portal vein involvement there is no hepatic artery involvement the lesion is otherwise resectable then there is no evidence of metastatic disease so that is how you say when whether the lesion is, if the the patient is operable or not the patient related factors is uh, ecog one patient fit patient not much comorbidity so he is fit enough tumor related factors no evidence of metastasis local factors the tumor is resectable so based on these two factors actually we decide whether the patient is operable or not so about the staging systems you know about the bismuth mskcc uh, tnm so because these staging systems i have put it here because it will give an idea about the resectability of the lesion especially the mskcc gives an idea the jernagen's classification you should read so that gives an idea whether the lesion is uh, resectable or not so this is we have discussed about uh, the bismuth classification here you can see so the, just the involvement of right or left duct is just type 2 then it involves a secondary blary radical so you can see here it is a secondary blary radical then it becomes 3a or the 3b so bilateral involvement is a 4 so this one this is the jernagen thing that you should read so this is actually the uh, tells about the local resectability of the lesion so if this is a type 3a lesion involvement of the right portal vein is not a problem okay it is actually the involvement of the main portal vein or the contralateral Contra portal vein that is the problem okay also the hepatic artery the same side hepatic this is the under jernagen doesn't come the hepatic artery involvement it discuss only about the atrophy portal vein and the biliary component okay so the one side the bile duct involvement the portal vein involvement hepatic artery involvement is not a problem if it involves contralateral portal vein hepatic artery or main portal vein or common hepatic artery then it is a problem and another thing that you should look for is the atrophy liver atrophy always there is an atrophy hypertrophy complex associated with hyalur phalangeal carcinoma the area affected if it is a type 3a lesion usually the right liver will go in for a atrophy and there will be a compensatory hypertrophy of the left so okay. that is there or not suppose if the left lobe is atrophic because of some reason then that patient becomes under So this you should read. So what about the role of preoperative biliary drainage? So we you have already uh, saying about the preoperative biliary drainage. So Arjun, sir, the the preoperative biliary drainage has both advantages and benefits, sir. if the bilirubin level is elevated as is uh, seen in this in this particular patient up to 24 then a biliary drainage should be done even though it could cause increased risk of infections like our cholangitis as could happen but if the patient is upfront if the patient is considered resectable and the bilirubin level is normal then we could go ahead for upfront surgery without biliary drainage so in this case in this case the bilirubin is high and you plan to do resection right hepatectomy along with cardiac lobe resection what do you plan what type of biliary drainage do you plan to do 
sir ptbd could be done as the patient has as a case of hilar cholangiocarcinoma yeah both are uh, percutaneous biliary drainage is one second is endoscopic drainage endoscopic, endoscopic yeah. drainage yes why can't you do left left sided endoscopic drainage of the left duct system and then do surgery why ptbd sir the growth the primary growth is it's a it's a bismuth collet type 3a sir with growth which is present at the hilus with extension into the right side so uh, pt bd pt bd would be more appropriate what type of drainage has more complications procedure related a pt bd sir so if possible endoscopic is now considered as good enough if you get it if you don't succeed it then pt bd is the option okay and yes. bring the bring the bill ribbon value ideally to less than 5 and then proceed for surgery that should be your answer okay when endoscopic drainage cannot be done then ptbd is the answer yes nikunj which side which side will you drain sir left uh, left side future layer remnant should be drained so the here the usually the questions that are asked whether you need a, a pre operative biliary drainage or not so the literature as you know is uh, somewhat uh, debatable so there are uh, uh, data on either side some people say that pre operative biliary drainage increases the chance of infection and it is not required and there are a few meta analysis even which compared pre operative biliary drainage versus no drainage for uh, hilar cholangiocarcinoma but uh, the results are if you have both Uh, the two or three meta analysis some of the meta analysis are actually against especially the meta analysis by liu et al which is from china that is actually against the preoperative biliary drainage there is another uh, meta analysis from us in 2016 that is published in uh, annals of surgical oncology i think that is supports the biliary drainage so whatever it is the general consensus is that it is better to do preoperative biliary drainage when so what are the indications specifically if you can say without any confusion one is cholangitis the presence of cholangitis when there is cholangitis you have to do a pre operative biliary drainage when the bilirubin is very high as arjun was saying if when it is there are some institutional protocols some senders keep it as 10 mg some senders as 15 if it is more than 15 mg percentage you have to do a pre operative biliary drainage suppose if the bilirubin is in the range of 9 and 8 and 9 there is then if there are no cholangitis actually there is not much need of a pre operative biliary drainage so there is a cholangitis if the pre operative bilirubin is more than 15 mg percentage so then definite if there is a delay in surgery so especially in institutional practices in institutions like regional cancer center we have a waiting period of 2 uh, uh, to 3 months in such cases you won't get an immediate day so in such cases so when there is cholangitis when there is very high bilirubin which is more than 10 or 15 mg percentage and there is a delay in surgery so in such cases there is a definite indication for pre operative biliary drain okay so which sir, one... to, which system to be drained it is the future liver remnant to be drained okay so sir was asking about what is the best method so sir was correctly pointed out always try for an ercp if it passes then ercp is the best thing but if you cannot do an ercp because of technical reason sometimes it might not go in such cases the ptbd percutaneous transhepatic biliary drain and what should be the level or what should be the level that you are looking for sir has already told when it is less than 5 mg percentage probably yeah to a controllable level then probably you can take up for surgery yeah sir anything else to be added i think we have covered most of them any questions if they have i think we can clear i think we have 15 more minutes to so the ct volumetry sir has already asked if there is inadequate flr the answer is the portal vein embolization that we have already discussed so this is the ct scan so this patient had undergone uh, ercp was initially tried that failed so we did a pt bd you can see the stent that on the right system you can also see the stent that is on the left side so here actually the bilateral ptbd was done 
So actually, you can see the two stents here inside the bile duct, two stents. So this is the image. A key case discussion. Yeah. So PTBD, so initially it is done on the left side, but uh, the uh, bilirubin was not coming down as expected. So it, it has to be done, repeated on the right side also. And of course, you have to pay about nutritional support also in such case. So what is the treatment plan? We have already discussed about the surgery. What surgery? Right hepatectomy. Before the surgery, yeah, lobectomy. Before the surgery, what is the role of diagnostic laparoscopy? Sir, a diagnostic laparoscopy can be used to check for any uh, uh, any other criteria which could preclude surgery, such as the presence of as cited, as yet unidentified peritoneal metastasis or the presence of ascites or free fluid or any uh, liver surface nodules which could be which are seen over the contralateral or the future liver liver remnant. All these could preclude surgery. Yeah, correct. So the diagnostic lab or staging lab is now the part of the treatment protocol. Whenever there is a uh, operable liver lesion, it's better to do a diagnostic laparoscopy because that can uh, detect uh, or avoid unwanted laparotomies, at least in 20 to 25 percent of the cases where you can identify the peritoneal or omendal disease or metastasis. So staging or diagnostic lab is a must before surgery. So what surgical procedure? The diagnostic or staging laparoscopy, as you have correctly said, it is the type 3A lesion, so the right hepatectomy, cordite lobectomy. The answer should be complete with complete excision of the extra hepatic biliary tree. You have to excise the entire biliary tree and you have to do a lymphadenectomy. Then the anastomosis is by Ruan by hepatic ozygenostomy. So if the question is asked regarding the surgery, this should be the complete answer. You will be doing a diagnostic laparoscopy, then right hepatectomy with cordite lobectomy. Complete excision of the extra hepatic biliary tree along with the radical lymphadenectomy and anastomosis in the form of Ruan by HCG. That is the complete answer. Okay. Why yeah. cordate lobectomy? May I ask? The lesion is only on the right lobe. Sir, cordate lobe uh, gets the drainage uh, on the both sides, uh, right as well as the uh, left hepatic duct. So, uh, in uh, the uh, studies it has been shown that uh, the coded lobe uh, bile duct involvement is seen all uh, near about in 30 to 40 percent of pilot cholangiopathy. That's and correct. It, yeah, that's correct. Uh, that's the reason why even if you think it's not involved, also you should go ready to do a coded lobe excision, unless the biopsy of the frozen section margin is clear. Some people try to avoid cordate lobe excision. But the other addendum to that is that even though your plan is right hepatectomy with cordate lobe excision, it's possible that the frozen section may show that left duct is also involved as a surprise. Whenever you say right hepatectomy, you should always go ready to do it right trisectionectomy also in all ILR carcinomas. Mm -hmm. If it's on the right side, if it's on the left side, you should always go ready to do a left trisection. Okay. So there is always a trial dissection that has been done before uh, the surgery or the hepatectomy has been confirmed. So this is the trial dissection. You can see the ducts. Can you see the ducts? So this is the yes, cystic. duct, yeah. cystic duct, common hepatic duct. So that is the right hepatic artery, hepatic common artery. hepatic artery, right and left hepatic arteries. So you can see the portal vein behaves, the right vein and the left vein, the division also you can appreciate. Yes. So you do the trial dissection first and then only you commit for the surgery. And always another important thing is for the surgery, what is another important thing as far as correctly said, you have to set frozen section. So you have to send frozen section of the proximal bile duct margin and distal bile duct margin before you uh, uh, before you to for the uh, resectional margins to get a negative resection margin. So that is the common hepatic artery. So you can see the right hepatic artery stem being ligated. So that is the left hepatic artery. You can see that. So, so you can see the portal vein, the entire portal vein, the entire fibro fatty tissue and the lymph nodes around this been cleared. Yeah. That is how you should do. 
so that is a portal vein so you can see the right hepat the right portal vein is ligated so this is the right anterior and posterior sectoral veins joining separate so that is why two ligatures there okay you can see the hepatic ducts there see there are two ducts why it is two ducts because it is we have to get the negative margin you have to go close to the left lobe so you have to enter up to the you have to take the entire left hepatic duct so you have to go up to the second and two lobe. and three yeah. so the caudate lobe is removed that is why there is a blank area there in the ivc near the ivc so there is nothing between the portal vein and the ivc that is because you have removed the caudate lobe also that is why uh, there is nothing between the uh, portal vein and the ivc what you are seeing here is the ivc so this is ivc yes sir so you can see the right hepatic vein stump there so can you see this is the stapled stump of the right hepatic vein so this is something like a complete surgery for uh hilar cholangiocarcinoma in the end don't forget to anchor the left lobe to the anterior abdominal wall yes sir can you do right hepatic yes to avoid the torsion yeah so any role for adjuvant treatment sir uh, there is a role of adjuvant treatment uh, in uh, in a r1 resection and not positive disease uh, the adjuvant uh, gemcitabine for 6 months uh, there is in the uh, bilkep study uh, the overall survival benefit is not statistically significant but now it is a standard of care for uh, uh, r1 uh, resection and uh, not positive disease sir So for R zero resections and not negative disease, uh, yeah, it has not proved benefit. There is no yeah, role for adjuvant. Completely people. for yeah, correct. But for R one resections and not positive disease, there is definitely a role for adjuvant treatment. So liver tra transplant as a treatment option. Sir, yes. it has been tried in certain Western institutes where uh, the patients need to be very rigorously selected. Uh, complete. Uh, Patient is initially given external beam radiotherapy followed by uh, IDDM radiotherapy as well, followed by capacitabin, and based on based on the regression of the patient and in a non-metastatic case, then they can be offered liver transplant. Yeah, yeah, you you should remember liver transplantation as an option in ileal cholangiocarcinoma involving bilaterally up to second degree ducts. particularly in asian countries where living donor liver transplantation is the option the relatives may not be happy if you say it's inoperable and nothing can be done okay you please remember this as an option in very eagerly eager families who are willing to go to any extent in hilar cholangiocarcinoma without any extra hepatic disease any lymph nodal metastasis any distant metastasis it should always be given as an option to our patients Tra transplant is an option particularly in countries where living donor liver transplantation is predominant compared to disease donor liver transplantation yes that is correctly pointed out only in the very highly selected patients there is a mayo clinic regime and there is a nebraska regime so they are doing they were invest they were doing liver transplant for hilar colony you should know about this not in detail as sir was saying uh, unresectable disease usually less than 3 cm no nodal disease regional or uh, extra hepatic nodal disease no evidence of metastasis in such cases after neo adjuvant treatment the mayo yes. protocol is there after neo adjuvant treatment they give concurrent chemo rt followed by Uh, liver transplant so liver transplant is an option but not generally done only in very selected cases you should know about the indication and thank you uh, uh, do we have enough time for uh, next patient or shall we wind up it's uh, already yeah definitely we have time for a rapid fire 5 to 10 minute case rapid fire okay so this is the patient detail then uh, we'll just quickly go through the MRI, uh, Nikunj, you can come and on the MRI. So where is the lesion? So on the right or left? So I would like to see it again, sir. Yeah.
right or left? So the left, the left lobe. Left yeah, lobe. it is the left lobe yes, which sir. is more prominent because the ISBRD yes, is the whole thing that is yes, more sir. common on C. So the ISBRD is most prominent on uh, left, the uh, segment. Head. Yeah. Yeah. The left segments. And you can also see the right lobe is a bit enlarged and, and left lobe is atrophic. Atrophy. So this is the yes, sir. atrophy, hypertrophy complex that's seen with. So this is a type 3B, type 3B cholangiocarcinoma. This is, so this is again post tending. You can see the left lobe is up, yeah, the right lobe is, yeah. So what is the surgical plan here? Arjun? Sir, we will, before considering surgery, first we will ensure the patient is fit for surgery, sir. All routine investigations. Yeah, the patient is operable, resectable. What will be the surgical plan? Yeah. Sir, uh, left, yeah. sir left hemihepatectomy along with the uh, excision of the complete biliary before that, tree. Before that? So when you post this patient for surgery, what will be the first thing you will be doing? Uh, diagnostic laparoscopy, yeah, sir. Yeah, diagnostic lab. Yes, sir. A diagnostic lab will be done, and then once the patient is seen, once it's seen that there are no subclinical, as like uh, uh, any no obvious metastasis, then we'll proceed with surgery. The surgical plan would be a left hemihepatectomy along with excision of the complete biliary tree, plus a radical lymphadenectomy along with the ruin by hepaticojejunos. You missed cordial lobotomy. Plus a cordial, yes. plus a cordial lobotomy. So this is a specimen just to see how the specimen will look like. So this, is, this, is a, this is the right hepatectomy. So the left hepatectomy, you can see again the arteries on that side. The right hepatic artery is preserved. The portal vein, the left portal vein is ligated. So we'll see the specimen, how the specimen will look like. This is actually the video that was taken for the pathologist. Because uh, you have to actually uh, tag the specimen and then only use pen. Okay. So you can see the cordial lobe there. Cordial lobe. Yeah, the entire cordial lobe has been seen. So that ligature is at the distal bile duct margin. So that is the distal bile duct margin. So what will be the proximal bile duct margin for this patient? This is the left hepatectomy specimen. Sir, just before uh, right sectoral. Uh, yeah, duct. correct. Yeah. So that that is the right sectoral duct. That is the right posterior and right anterior. You can see the two ducts. So you have to sense uh, the frozen section from these two margins. Okay, the right and left, uh, the right anterior and posterior sectoral duct. Before saying that it is a uh, just to confirm that it is a negative resection. Yeah, margin negative resection. So the caudate lobe and their liver is there. Complete excision of the extra hepatic biliary tree is there. You can see the entire caudate lobe. You, can, you have the spigelian lobe, the paracarbal portion and the right portion. And what you are showing there is, what is that? What is that structure? That has been shown there at the toe portion. Left hepatic way. Yeah, left hepatic way, correct. So that is a complete specimen, the left hepatectomy, cordial lobectomy, complete excision of the extra hepatic biliary tree, and lymphadenectomy. So you can see the lymph nodes that has been placed there. The regional lymph nodes. So another rapid fire, 69 year old male patient, vague pain, abdomen, loss of weight of one month duration, no history of jaundice or fever, is having type 2 diabetes mellitus and hypertension. Examination, there is a large palpable mass lesion, especially in the epigastrium, it's consistent with liver. You have the bilirubin values, CA99 values. Ultrasound is showing the large lesion arising from left lobe of the liver. Size 15 into 10 into 8 centimeter, mild coarse the catheter of the liver, portal vein appears normal. So you have the CT here. Just go through the CT quick. So what do you see, Arjun? Sir, 
So this is uh, a uh, it is an axial view of a plane contrast a plane CT scan, which shows a large mass which is present in the left lobe, which is occupying the entire left lobe of the liver. And I would like to see it a little more. A contrast, yeah. What do you see there now? So it is a contrast and on CT scan axial view again with the mass present in the left lobe of the liver. Uh, we can see a peripheral rim of enhancement which is seen around the mass as well, which is consist consistent with the findings of an intrahepatic angiocarcinoma. And yes, there's also atrophy of the left lobe of the liver, sir. Yeah, you said it correctly. So there is a peripheral. Enhancement. There is a peripheral rim enhancement of the lesion. So, can you appreciate that peripheral enhancement? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a peripheral enhancement. Peripheral enhancement. Yes. Sir. Peripheral enhancement of the lesion. So, this is the delayed phase. <clears throat> so it's, yeah, see this thing in delayed phase. So the central area is enhancing in the enhancing delayed phase. You can see because of stroma, central yeah. stroma. So this is a CT, large irregular but well defined mass, left lobe of liver, hypodense mass with irregular peripheral enhancement in the arterial phase. Gradual centripetal enhancement in delayed studies. Left hepatic vein is infiltrated. Mother portal vein and hepatic arteries are not involved. CT chest, no meds. Okay. So, what is the diagnosis here? Uh, left lobes are uh, intrahepatic uh, mass uh, on imaging study, most likely to be uh, cholangiocarcinoma, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, then uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. DDs? Arjun, other DDs? Sir, it could be a choleric, it could be a metastasis to the liver from a from an extra hepatic source, sir. Probably possibly a colorectal liver metastasis as well could be seen in this case. Yeah, these are the uh, DDs that can focal, be focal uh, or nodular hyperplasia can okay. be a, yeah. one of so, the DDs. Here, uh, how it is different from HCC, that is the most important thing. In HCC, you know, there is an arterial enhancement and a delayed washout that is classical of uh, HCC. But here, for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, it is a peripheral rim enhancement and uh, delayed, uh, sometimes there is a delayed central enhancement on delayed phases. That is most characteristic. There will be a bit of capsular retractions. So these are the features of uh, uh, intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma that differentiate from HCC, but other DDs are definitely metastasis. That is also a DD. Benign lesions are also a DD. So what next? CT just is normal. Then anything else? Yeah, definitely we need to do because we are always metastasis is also there in mind. You have to do an apogee endoscopy. You have to do a colonoscopy in selective cases, especially when if you are suspecting primary sclerosing cholangitis. That is associated with colitis. inflammatory double disease, ulcerative colitis. So, or if you are suspecting a MERS colonoscopy also needs to be done. The role of biopsy here? Sir, in case of uh, classical imaging findings, uh, the biopsy is not uh, biopsy is not required. We can proceed directly with surgery. If you are, if you are having any other uh, doubtful, if you are suspecting a primary hepatocellular carcinoma, or if the patient is a treated case or with a prior history of any extra hepatic source of malignancy and we are suspecting a source of metastasis, then biopsy along with IHC can be considered. Yeah, but CT, we have already answered and described about workup. We are just stating workup is negative, no evidence of CLD or portal hypertension. There is adequate FLR, operable lesion. What is the surgery? Here. And how it is different from? The classical hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. That is what I want to know. Arjun? Sir, in case of hyalur cholangiocarcinoma, there, there will be longitudinal spread of the disease along the biliary radicals. So, uh, uh, 
So what will be the surgery here in this case? Forget about hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. What will be the surgery? There is an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma on the left lobe. What will be the surgery here? Sir, a left hemihepatectomy plus a radical lymphadenectomy plus ruin my hepatic or jejunal sir. Okay, for what? Sir? Hepatic or jejunal stomach for what? Your exercise mm -hmm. will not be required, sir. Um, yes. Margin negative resection. Margin uh, negative resection. Left hemihepatectomy. So the answer should be the left hepatectomy and uh, uh, radical lymphadenectomy. That should be the answer. And you, and you should stress that there is no need for doing a cardiac lobe excision. Right. That's the important difference between left hemiapetectomy for this versus a hyalur cholangiocarcinoma involved in the left duct. Staging lab? Did you miss staging lab? Staging lab has to yes, be sir, has so to Here be. also you have to do a staging lab. Staging lab followed by a left hepatectomy and uh, uh, radical lymphadenectomy. That is what it is required for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. There is no bile duct division. So there is no need for uh, uh, hepatic genostomy, Arjun, for you. <laughs> so don't say, don't repeat when you uh, present these kind of cases for exams. So, so it is just yes. the left hepatectomy and the lymphadenectomy. So those are the two differences. No need for, for ductal, excision. ductal excision and anast anastomosis and no need for Cardiac lobe excision as a general rule. There may be exceptions where there is direct infiltration of the tumor into the cardiac lobe, but otherwise you don't do it as a routine. This is a specimen, the same case you can see. So what about the prognosis generally? For all, not for intrahepatic, for all hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. Sir, five-year overall survival in the different uh, studies is uh, around 20 to 50 percent. Uh, the uh, among the different types, the best prognosis is for the distal uh, hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. Yes, sir. When, when prognosis is asked after resection, you should say based yes. on R zero, R zero, and presence or absence of nodal mats. nodal nodal mats. Yes, that's sir. how you should differentiate the results. Right, sir. Okay, tell us now. So, sir, uh, the uh, when there is an involvement of the uh, node, the prognosis uh, uh, is very poor. And uh, any any statistics means what will be the five year survival versus R zero resection and no no nodal mats. Yes, sir. So uh, R0 and R1 resection in absence of the nodal metastasis, uh, there is no uh, much statistically significant overall survival, sir. But compared to R0 resection, results are poor, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the important thing. So if suppose it's R0 and no lymph node mets are there, the five-year survivals can be anywhere between 50 to 60 50 percent. 50 to 60 percent, yes. Yeah. Whereas if any one of these is positive, then it drops down significantly. The so five-year survival is almost zero in this case. Yeah. So these are the two important prognostic factors are the margin status. So it should be a margin negative reception and the lymph node involved. Lymph node involved. Of course, the third would be something like a lymphovascular involvement, vascular involvement. So these are the three important things, mainly the margin positivity and the nodal status. That's they are saying it is between somewhere between 20 to 40 and even 50 percentage in some series if there is an R0 resection and non-negative disease. So versus R1 status, it comes down to uh, less than 15 percentage in many of the series. So, thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Subhash and Dr. Pratavadi, sir. Uh, before we move on to the next segment, which would be the Q&A, uh, any uh, tips from uh, the both the examiners for the students as to how they fared with this case? Was their uh, uh, line of thinking correct? And uh, uh, any piece of advice for them? Yeah, for, for both of them, uh, the 
pre presentation was good, except for the fact that after ultrasound, when the suspicion is hyalur block, the next investigation should always be MR and MRCP. Okay, then CCT follows that. You should never say the reverse. Otherwise, they have done well. Uh, Dr. Subhash? Yeah, I am the moderator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are examiner and moderator. <laughs> yeah, okay, they did fairly well. So they have to uh, concentrate more on certain areas where uh, they have ambiguity in uh, answering. So hope uh, uh, they had a uh, good understanding about the disease after uh, going through this exam. Perfect. So uh, that brings us to our next uh, segment, which is the Q&A. And uh, uh, today I have just, there were a lot of questions on the Q&A as well as chat. Uh, so I've just copied uh, them here. Uh, I'll begin with the first one, which is uh, uh, how to palliate jaundice in patients with inoperable intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma who have jaundice. Uh, See, first, first and foremost about this question is that why will an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma have jaundice of any significance? It will never be more than four. So I don't think any palliation is needed for that. I don't think so. A situation will come where you need to palliate the jaundice. Correct. Maybe, maybe, maybe they were asking about the perihilar <laughs> hilar cholangiocarcinoma. So, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, even in perihilar cholangiocarcinoma, if it's deemed inoperable and palliation is the only thing, unless patient has cholangitis or pruritus, there is no need to palliate jaundice alone. So the answer to that would be to do a percutaneous biliary drainage, either one side or both sides, depending on what's the presentation. Yeah, sir has correctly pointed out uh, the indication for palliation should be the symptoms. Yeah, there is cholangitis and uh, severe itching. So there should be an indication to palliate. That is first thing. Second thing is the methods are you always you can try for an ERCP first. Correct. If ERCP is possible, then you can do an ERCP biliary stenting and uh, bring down the bilirubin. Second option is uh, the uh, ERCP, you cannot pass the biliary stents. Then the second option would be a PTBD and a biliary stenting. So when you do a PTBD and biliary stenting, if it is inoperable, then uh, always while doing a stenting, there are two options. One is a plastic stent and a metallic stent. So if it is an operable lesion where you are doing a preoperative biliary drainage, it is always better to put in a plastic stent. Because if you put in a metallic stent, we have find it very difficult during surgeries. So don't put metallic stent uh, if it is uh, an operable lesion. So inoperable lesions, it is the self-expanding metal stents that is best for uh, PTBD and biliary drainage. Uh, our second question is, uh, would ALPS be uh, an option for you uh, when there is low FLR, uh, Dr. Sopas? Yeah, the uh, ALPS is always an option to uh, increase the FLR. Uh, so ALPS, uh, for the uh, knowledge of uh, postgraduate students, it is actually the associating liver partition with a ligation of portal vein and a staged hepatectomy. That is ALPS. Associating liver partition, that is AL, and uh, ligation of portal vein for staged hepatectomy, that is ALPS. And that is usually done for uh, 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 metastasis, hepatocellular carcinoma, and those kind of cases. Here, uh, there is a doll role definitely if the FLR alone is a problem, but generally not done in cases of uh, hyalur cholangiocarcinoma because the more problem is rather than the uh, getting an FLR, it is the uh, involvement of the other vessels in that area that is the more problematic thing and nowadays uh, doing ALPS the number of ALPS that has been done is coming down because you have uh, interventional radiology people who are very good and they can do a, a portal vein embolization so with the portal vein embolization you will get uh, with an ipsilateral portal vein embolization you will get adequate hypertrophy of the contralateral lobe then there is uh, no need for uh, an invasive procedure like ALPS because ALPS is always associated with severe morbidity and mortality. 
Uh, and doing alps in obstructive jaundice especially hyalur cholangia carcinoma is very 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 difficult you know the all the biliary ducts are dilated so when you divide the uh, parenchyma so there will be severely severe bile bile leak and those kind of things so in hyalur cholangia carcinoma not much at all yeah. to summarize uh, so that would be sir any thing to add to agree yeah it, except for colorectal mets or metastatic disease, ALPS is still considered experimental for most other diseases. And in hyalur cholangiocarcinoma, it's considered very risky to do ALPS because the morbidity and mortality from sepsis and liver failure is very high. So most people do not do ALPS for hyalur cholangiocarcinoma. Right. I think upper GI scopy was discussed uh, in the workup of uh, patients today, uh, would an upper GI scopy be a part of protocol in all patients when we are considering cholangiocarcinomas? Uh, I, don't, I don't think upper GI endoscopy is an investigation needed in a typical case of allergic cholangiocarcinoma. Unless in an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma scenario, you have suspicion it could be a, a differential diagnosis of secondary is considered. Otherwise, I don't think upper GI endoscopy should be considered. The other scenario is if you have an intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma versus a HCC in a serotic compensated serotic background, you want to rule out varices, maybe, but otherwise it has very limited role. Right. Uh, uh, Subhash sir, uh, would you like to add anything on that as to why the upper GI scopies were done in today's cases and uh, when they will not be done? Yeah, as our protocol, we do upper GI endoscopy in most of the cases. So, just, so there will be a bit of biliary cirrhosis, at least biliary cirrhosis, and you are worried about the uh, uh, undetected uh, uh, cirrhosis and uh, those kind of things in many cases. So uh, it is always better to look for the upper GA endoscopy to look for the varices in most of the cases. But as uh, sir said, uh, it is a part of our protocol <laughs> to yeah, do right. endoscopy in most of the cases. And I think anyway, a lot of them will undergo ERCP and uh, it gets done, yeah. uh, documented anyway at that time. Right. Uh, so could you, uh, there was a question on which lymph node stations uh, do you want to be addressed uh, during these resections? It should be something similar to gallbladder malignancy, including the hyalur nodes up to the periductal nodes, as well as along the hepatic artery and peri superior, at least superior peripancreatic Yeah. Uh, Sir, last question for today is, can we clinically differentiate a GB neck malignancy, which has jaundice from hyalur cholangiocarcinomas on uh, history and examination. I think that's the question. On history and examination, it's difficult to differentiate, but on CT or MR, you can easily make out because most uh, GB malignancies neck will have a significantly larger mass lesion compared to a hyalur cholangiocarcinoma, which in the hyalur situation is usually sclerosing type. The yeah. Mass is nothing but thickened bile ducts. Whereas if it's GB malignancy, you have a significant mass lesion. And the history also in GB malignancy, the patient looks quite sick by the time he presents with GB malignancy and hyalur blocks. Right. Yeah, sometimes, uh, it is actually, yeah, sometimes it is uh, really difficult, especially the type 1 bismuth correlate type of hyalur cholangiocarcinoma where it involves onto the cystic duct and the GB neck. So whether it is actually the GB malignancy that is extending onto the bile duct or it is actually the primary biliary malignancy which has gone to the uh, cystic duct, uh, differentiating that would be very, very difficult actually. It's sometimes very difficult, no doubt. Yeah. So uh, these uh, this comes to an end to our uh, Q&A session for today. Uh, I would like to thank both the examiners uh, for giving us their time and uh, actually to Pratap sir because uh, he uh, decided to uh, attend this meeting in an emergency when we could not uh, have Dr. Nain Lagaral with us and uh, cancel his plans to actually uh, teach us today. So thank you Pratap sir and uh, 
uh, I would like to personally thank Dr. Subhash also because uh, uh, the way he has prepared these uh, presentation, including all these cases, uh, and there was a lot of to and fro where he took inputs from all of us and uh, really uh, did a, a fantastic job today. So thank you both examiners and congratulations to both uh, uh, candidates. Uh, I invite uh, uh, our secretary, uh, Dr. Chandra Mohan, uh, to kindly uh, deliver the vote of thanks for today's uh, webinar. Sir. Thank you, Srijan. Am I audible? Yeah. So once again, uh, we are con concluding one of the flagship events of uh, IASO, the IASO Academic Masterclass Series. And uh, the success of this program entirely belongs to uh, Dr. Srijan Shukla and Sub Dr. Dr. Subramani Sarao, uh, who have been instrumental in conducting this uh, program for uh, almost two to three years. In fact, uh, the it's already reckoner for a, any candidate going for exam to go back and uh, look at the recordings and also for examiners because I am an examiner and uh, I uh, used to uh, examine students from other branches which I don't treat usually. For me, I think the easiest thing is to uh, listen to the class and go while I, I was jogging in the day of examination. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the candidates are actually surprised. You know, how, sir, how do you know so much head and neck? <laughs> you know that you don't manage. And uh, I'm telling my trade secret. And uh, uh, this is, uh, <laughs> so if you look at the, it's, it's uh, as time goes by, we have a big uh, uh, gajano of information, which is available with us. And uh, yes, so thanks uh, the team for this wonderful event. And especially coming to today's event, uh, uh, this event has been postponed uh, a couple of times. And even last minute also the examiner uh, was, main examiner uh, could not come. But even then, uh, it was done fantastically, beautifully. I really thank Dr. Pradab Reddy as well as Dr. Subhash for chipping in the last moment. And uh, I don't feel we felt any absence of a chief examiner here. And things were better than expectations. And thanks to you guys, uh, amazingly done. And uh, this again proves that uh, our country doesn't have the, any uh, scarcity of uh, academic brilliance. And at any moment, uh, the, it, it can uh, compensate for the... Uh, faculty role. And coming to the our students also, uh, usually cholangiocarcinoma is a topic which is not uh, well understood by the surgical oncology students, but uh, they did a wonderful job and they presented well. And during discussion also, we felt you know, there are some differences in management, uh, even in faculty side. And I, I think that is a, the crust of examination because the cancer is managed in slightly different way in uh, all across the country. And understanding the differences and uh, differentiate that from textbook uh, recommendations and guidelines and understanding the real uh, management principles so that we can safely manage patients. That is the most important thing. I think towards that goal, this masterclass was a great success. And I thank the candidates as well uh, for uh, performing well. And uh, also I thank all the delegates who watch this. And I also thank the people who are going to watch it in future on YouTube. And thank you all from IASO side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Salman. The next meeting is going to be on 14 February, same time, 7 p.m. Tuesday. And the topic is going to be adrenal tumors. Uh, this is all from us, uh, uh, from the ISO Academic Council. Uh, we thank you for logging in. Uh, have a very good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.